Good morning, good afternoon. Dear chairpersons and dear colleagues, please allow me to say, uh, to start with uh, the words of gratitude for the invitation to come here alongside with my colleagues in order to make a presentation in the area of uh, regional hypothermia. I like it very much that the deputy president of this institution said a couple of words about uh, Parmedidis, the Parmenides. This is uh, exactly uh, the uh, words that I want to quote as well. So give me the chance to incur a fever and I will treat all the possible diseases. Indeed, I would like to start with this quotation as well. And I would like to say that this regional deep hypothermia is very interesting to the contemporary medicine. And that is why I would like to make my presentation from the viewpoint of a field uh, which we call radiology, and in Russia they call it uh, rengenology or radiology as well. So I'm a radiologist myself, and the biggest uh, time of my life I devoted to the science, uh, and uh, also I dealt with cardio and cardiovascular um, conditions, and I studied it by means of uh, MR and uh, MRI. So why do we need to control this hybrid hypothermia by means of imaging, uh, for example, by means of MR? Why is it so important? By means of M MRI, we can measure the temperature. And measuring the temperature is a very uh, important issue. I will try to explain this by means of this graph, how the uh, function changes depending on the temperature. Look, if there is an increase by 38.5, uh, from 38.5 uh, to 40.5 on centigrade, that if there is an elevation in temperature, you can see these uh, columns uh, from 40.5 to 41.5 and further on. You can see that when we increase the temperature, the blood circulation also increases, and vice versa. If the temperature goes down, the uh, blood circulation also is decreased. Subsequently, the vascularity also, uh, the volume of vascularity is increased, and uh, vice versa with a decrease of temperature. A very similar uh, situation with angiogenesis. You can see the metabolism here and the permeabilization of the tissue. You can see that in low temperatures, uh, there is an increase in the metabolic processes, and uh, if the temperature goes beyond 41.5 and 44, there is a decrease in metabolism, but uh, permeabil permeability is increased. This is due to the oxygenation change in the tissue. First, there is an increase, and then there is a decrease. You can see that uh, tissue acidosis changes. The higher the temperature is, the higher there is uh, tissue acidosis. There are different reparatory mechanisms. First, they are very high, and further on, uh, they go down. And you can see that necrosis and the necrosis uh, can be associated with the temperature over 45 degrees on centigrade. This is something that uh, we can see, and if we want to deal with hypothermia on a regular basis, we need to stringently control the temperature uh, inside the tumor. Before that, it was done invasively. You can see here this child uh, has a sarcoma, and there was, a C by means of CT, we localized um, a device to uh, measure temperature inside. But you should know that, first of all, it's an invasive procedure, and uh, so it is not good from this viewpoint. And the further on, with this particular approach, you can measure the temperature only in the vicinity of the needle itself. But if uh, there is something, uh, some field of interest, some centimeter away, the temperature can be different there. It can be lo lower or higher. Subsequently, this is not an optimal approach to measuring temperature in the tissue uh, if there is a regional deep hypothermia. You can see here this 
machine for regional hypothermia. It is called applicator. And this is an applicator and a table. And this is MRI, Siemens coil. But its temperature, nonetheless, can be also measured by uh, GE or Philips machines if there is 1.5 Tesla. And the patient during the therapy is inside this MRI coil, and we can uh, measure the temperature uh, in the, of the tumor during all the procedure. And we can, if there is, if the temperature, uh, the temperature should be permanent, approximately 41, 45 degrees. We also made several experimental studies where the invasive approach was applied in order to to measure the temperature in the tumor. And by means of MR, you can see similar measurements, similar results in the temperature measurements. Subsequently, that means that uh, we can control MR temperatures inside the tumor very well. Once again, you can see this MR machine. You can see the tail. You can see the applicator. The applicator, uh, inside the applicator, there is a patient. And in the middle portion of this applicator, there will be uh, the tumor. And during the study, we can support the temperature at the level, at the targeted level. And every 10 minutes, we automatically have measurements of the temperature inside the tumor by means of MR. And uh, depending on this, we can regulate this temperature and we can just uh, maintain it at a particular level. I would like to explain this principle, this scheme of hybrid hypothermia. You can see the applicator here. And there are 12 antennas in uh, three circles, in this part and in this part, and also in the middle portion. And on the basis of this, we can localize and uh, we can actually maintain the temperature at a particular level. And I will explain this a bit uh, in more detail on the next slide. <coughs> if you deal with hypothermia, with regional hypothermia, there are, you know that there are two different approaches. One of the uh, techniques is capacitive systems. This system has the temperature uh, which uh, goes from one side, penetrates the body, and you can see that uh, the whole of the body receives approximately the same temperature. And uh, this is a radiative system that I work more with, with multiple antenna systems and uh, all around the applicator. As you can see, what we receive is a very similar situation as uh, we have in radiotherapy, uh, like the one that is applied in this institution. So that means that by means of this antenna, we can, uh, we, we can heat in such a way that we sh receive uh, temperature highest inside the tumor. And around in the uh, adjacent tissues, the temperature will be much lower. This is quite possible because with this applicator, we can change the phase. And depending on the difference in this phase, we receive different temperature modes and in a particular targeted areas. Of course, we can change the energy from 80 to 120 uh, hertz. and. Uh, Subsequently, you can localize the highest temperature in the targeted area. And the smallest uh, tumor where we are capable of increasing the original temperature is approximately five square centimeters in diameter. How can we do it? By means of MR, the method uses the chemical shift. And you can see here the um, MR. Uh, is uh, 20 degrees, but when there is a, a resonance frequency shift, when the temperature is 44 degrees, you can see that the signal changes. There will be a 
highest signal on the right. Subsequently, on the basis of this, we can measure the temperature inside the tumor. And how do we do it? So if we uh, measure the temperature by means of MR, the first image that we receive with MR before the increase in temperature, um, after that, in 10 minutes, we have another measurement. This is the first measurement of in elevated temperature. And we receive it as a difference between this signal in T. T0, T1 now, and then in 10 minutes we have another image, and then in other 10 minutes you receive the third image. So every 10, 10 minutes we have an image, a slice with a high temperature, how it acts in the tumor, and depending on this we can adapt our antennas, our applicator in such a mode for the temperature to be at a particular level inside the tumor. This slide shows very well that the effect of hypothermia depends on how long this hypothermia was conducted. If it was just 30 or 60 minutes, then it uh, will there will be difference in uh, eff effect and efficiency. In six, uh, the 60 minutes treatment is much more effective. And this is another work from uh, Van Ron, who Dr. Van Ron, uh, who verified the very important role of temperature and time in the effect of treatment. This slide shows the change in the mean indicators of MR in the liver in dynamics. You can see this is uh, first 15 minutes, 29 minutes, then follow 51 minutes, 62, 78, and 83. And you can see how the temperature changes inside the liver. And uh, you can see that we need approximately 30 to 40 minutes in order to receive the optimal temperature that we need inside the tumor. Subsequently, if we uh, deal with regional hyperthermia, deep hyperthermia, we need the patient to be treated for approximately one hour. So we need approximately half an hour to reach the uh, temperature. Subsequently, the patient must be approximately an hour and a half inside the MR coil. Here you can see typical distribution of the temperature on the magnet in the clinical situation after 12 minutes. You can see necrosis here and here we can see the tumor and we see that the distribution is not homogeneous and after 51 minutes we have a very good uh, homogeneous distribution of the temperature in the tumor and necrosis. And here uh, temperature is measured as well, regional hypothermia, uh, carcinoma, how to say it, it's uh, of the bladder. Uh, so, uh, 10, 20, 48, 60, 72, 84 minutes, and we managed to increase uh, this temperature and to maintain it at a particular level. This is anal carcinoma after, after 10, 20, uh, 40, 78 minutes, and uh, uh, there are spots where we want the temperature to be increased regionally, and we managed to achieve it. So this is sarcoma. Uh, it's high temperature is applied. The tumor, you can see it. You can see how the temperature is uh, elevating in time. And we can see the in the rectum, in the muscle, uh, there are no changes of temperature. Maybe it will increase a little bit, but it's the same level. And here we can see the perfusion distribution uh, before and during partial. 
uh, treatment with hypothermia, AIDS, rectal carcinoma. This is the first session. The second session, we can see how it is elevating, and we can judge about, about peritoneal uh, carcinosis. It's very uh, homogeneous. Uh, Pictured so the velocity of uh, blood flow. It's uh, rectal cancer before, during hypothermia, and we can see how uh, the blood influx is developing in the major vessels. And after this, it's no, it will be normalized. The blood flow we can see, and this is uh, hypothermia. It's a comb of soft tissues. We can see that hypothermia gives us. Uh, uh, reduction of the perfusion into uh, the tumor, especially we can see it at the borders. It means that during hypothermia, uh, physiological path, uh, physiological changes happen, and in our view, it's a very interesting phenomena, a very interesting situation for those who work in the uh, field of radiology, and very interesting for doctors. We can see elevation of temperature in the water in the major vessels. So we have seen it, and here we see that in the small vessels we will not find this phenomena. What are the mechanisms involved regarding hypothermia? Changing of perfusion of the tumor during therapy, this perfusion could change acidosis of the tumor cells, reduction of the ATF. Uh, it's a destruction of cell uh, walls as a result of thermodynamical pressure and necrosis. Then uh, the velocity of replication of DNA is going down. Uh, we can see edema of endothelium and the microthrombosis and angiogenetic block and ASP protein production is going up, heat shock protein and effects or synergy effects together with other uh, uh, therapeutic approaches and the deputy director of your institute has mentioned this uh, such if uh, effects, uh, uh, such synergetic effects, together with chemotherapy, results uh, in the elevation of cell cytostatic, uh, its improvement in cellular uh, micro uh, uh, processes, reduction of mechanisms of uh, uh, rebuild of DNA, and it increases efficacy uh, in hypertoxic zones and G2 and S phases uh, shows us very positive uh, changes. Uh, uh couple of clinical results and again G2 and S phases attract our attention. Uh, my colleagues uh, will give you other interesting cases, but a couple of results on my part, I think they are very interesting. Metastatic lymph, lymph nodes, uh, uh, inoperable, uh, inoperable case, and we can see results after only irradiation, and you can see how the results change if it is combined with hypothermia. Uh, uh, complete remission 41% uh, and 83 in case of combination. Five year nodal control, 24 versus 69 and five year overall survival, zero versus 53. And same situation could be seen. Uh, in case of combination of the uh, therapeutic methods, it's uh, uh, rectal cancer only, radiotherapy, complete palliation in 25%, and uh, palliation is in place for seven months roughly. When it's a combination with hypothermia, we can see that complete palliation is in place, uh, is, is an increase, pardon, in a 45% medial uh, duration of palliation is 17 months. It's a very good slide. Uh, Dr. Van der Zee gave it to me. We can see improvement of clinical results, uh, different endpoints. We we'll analyze if uh, chemo or radiotherapy was added by hyper hypothermia. It, uh, 
this respect of where the tumor was located always gave improvement of the results if hyperthermia was uh, added, deep one, regional one. I wanted to show you results from the Center for Children Oncology. Dr. Rizolotsky could not come here with us. He works there, would like to present his results. Uh, refractory high malignance of tissue sarcoma in children and adolescents. And you can see here this child, how he is positioned here in front of MR, uh, MR uh, apparatus applicate and then and the plastic uh, material and there is water there in this plastic media uh, when the applicator is in use the temperature is going up of course it's uh, we apply sedation delantine D dhb uh, there is no need in comprehensive and complete anesthesia it's interesting that it, in respect in respect of and disregard of this uh, i mean that it's five years 15 years old 30 years old uh, temperature with the help of the regional hypothermia will be increasing uh, disrespect of the age and uh, this elevation will be at the same level. Another example, uh, uh, sarcoma, rhabdomyosarcoma, first there was uh, no response or poor response to chemo and then uh, when hypothermia was added, we can see uh, that the tumor uh, reduced and decreased in sizes. Similar situation, three-year-old boy, uh, it's sarcoma, extra having uh, sarcoma, non-respondent after chemotherapy was added by hypothermia thermal therapy, uh, the size of the tumor reduce uh, a combination of the me methods, how to do it. Uh, the first uh, session of chemotherapy and then same day hypothermia is applied and uh, uh, the fourth day uh, first uh, chemotherapy then hypothermal uh, application first day uh, radiotherapy uh, and on the fifth, uh, fifth uh, and then it is added by hypothermia and on the last day same uh, what is important uh, the interruption between uh, the uh, radiotherapy and hypothermia should not be more than 30 minutes so first hypothermia and the, it doesn't matter which is first uh, radiotherapy this session or hi, uh, hypothermia it could be vice versa a group of 20 patients with different sarcomas you can see uh, that uh, uh, non-responses even uh, responded uh, 12 per, uh, of them and then uh, they got chemotherapy those patients and regional hyperthermal treatment and complete remission, six patients and partial remission and eight patients. It means that protocol uh, uh, works and it's quite successful in 45 approximately percent of cases. Other results uh, from the same institution, they are very interesting too. Patients uh, with a non-testicular uh, germ uh, cell tumor. Uh, when we consider the results, we can see the situation before oh, uh, it was only chemotherapy applied and after the combination of the chemotherapy with the hypothermia, we can see that the tumor started reducing. And here, Dr. Van Z provided us with the results of combination of chemo with hypothermia. Uh, in 15 cases of 16, we can see uh, improvement of the situation and they live quite long. And without hypothermia, we can see that the results leaves much to be desired. And complete remission was only in six patients of 16. In case of hypothermia application, it was in 15 patients of 16. 
so my view, my approach, uh, I'm a radiologist. Uh, MRI, hybrid uh, hypothermia, it's a new approach. It uh, allows us to measure temperature. Of course, technical, from the technical point of view, it's very difficult, but it's possible to do, to control it and to elevate it. Uh, Philips uh, Simmons uh, magnetic uh, uh, instruments, apparatus, uh, should be applied. It's not toxic, changes of uh, temperature uh, in the tissue, uh, multiple morphological and functional changes in the tumor and in the sur surrounding tissues. It's a load on the system of blood flow. Uh, that's why the arterial pressure could go down and uh, heart rate could go up. and uh, because perfusion of the myocardium is changing its interesting situation, MRI gives us the following chances to get an image of morphology, to see the characteristics of the uh, tissue, to measure temperature, to measure blood flow and perfusion of the organs, to change, uh, pardon, to measure uh, the levels of magnetic uh, perfusion and penetrability, to measure oxygenation of tissues and pH parameters, uh, spectroscopic uh, studies of uh, metabolic processes possible, and uh, we could think about measurement of the survival or viability of tissues. Hyper hypothermia and MRI clinical results are good MRI hybrid uh, hypothermia is quite inspiring and I would, I would like to show you uh, this special uh, less than one uh, millimeter time less than 100 ms functional less than one centimeter it's a uh, uh, simultaneous visualization of structure and function kids uh, said uh, what is structure and what is function what we call structure they are about slow processes that develop during long time what we call function it's quick processes uh, that happen during short period of time uh, 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 recognition is not static. It's always a process. Even the object uh, of our investigation is a process. Uh, everything is changing in time. Uh, about prospects, uh, we could say that the desire uh, of Parmenid 2,000.5 thousand years ago, to, uh, this desire, this wish uh, could be implemented. It means uh, we can increase the temperature as much as we uh, want and we could maintain it at this level. Uh, we have uh, principal pathophysiological understanding of the processes and the results of the second and third phase uh, uh, regarding hybrid hyper hypothermia has very good, uh, brilliant prospects if we analyze and judge on the results. What is necessary? Interdisciplinary specialized collaboration between radiochemia, oncologists, radio diagnostic potential should be involved. Uh, physicists, uh, chemists, physiologists, pathologists, uh, uh, IT specialists, and others are to work together if we want to, to obtain very good result, uh, results at the end of my presentation, I would like to express my gratitude to all people who taught me uh, to understand uh, what hypothermia is about. Thank you very much for your attention.